But what would this strange bipedal animal with grasping feet have looked like when it walked? Discovery Channel filmmakers have come up with a strategy to find out. They'll use digital tools developed by Hollywood Studios to help visualize how Artie might have moved through her ancient world. Artipithecus seems to be a paradox. A bipedal hominid with a grasping foot and a chimp-sized brain. Here we have a creature that was unanticipated by science. The evidence for it could only have come from the fossil record. Artie's skeleton reveals a strange new creature. One that walked on two feet. And what odd feet they were. But one of the, the interesting things that we have to deal with, sure. and the most difficult, is the foot. Okay. And at first we thought this thing has a kind of free, great toe. The process of recreating it's Artie's like movements begins really at a company tall. in Southern California so called Life Modeler. An organization like, like Life Mod um, has spent years building up extremely sophisticated programs that can simulate human motion. So we're lucky because this, the creature that we're looking at has many elements in common with modern humans. What, one of the problems that we've got is, is how to recreate in a way that will fit the model. Sure. Replicating human motion with computers is life modeler's specialty. These models simulate the dynamics of muscles, bones, and joints. This one is being used to help a prosthetics company design a knee replacement. Life Modeler also works with athletes to help improve their performance. We can look at very complicated motion like uh, a sport such as tennis and recreate that with a biomechanics simulation model and retrieve a lot of information from that. So what would happen if this same technology was applied to Artie's very unusual feet? Lovejoy wants to work with Life Modeler to see if they can simulate how Artipithecus might have walked. We can take those data that we've derived from the skeleton and from Jay and from Gen and put them all together and give them to Life Modeler. We know what elements are shared and what elements are not shared between Artipithecus and modern humans. So they can take their programming, de-evolve it into a previously existing form, and tell us how this creature moved. But this 4.4 million year old foot is not like anything Life Modeler has ever seen. With guidance from Lovejoy, Sean's team will need to modify their human model to match Artie's unique anatomy. We can test things like grasping function, which you're seeing right now. And so what we have here is a mixed function. We have a foot that has to be grasping in the arboreal environment in trees, but then revert to towing off in walking. The second metatarsal is essentially the center axis of the foot, and it's the major propelling element of the foot in this animal. It's not in humans and it's not in chimpanzees. This is a totally unique animal. This model will help the scientists see how Artie might have walked upright, despite her grasping toe. Seeing Artie's legs move is one thing, but what about the rest of her body? If we could go back in time into that ancient African woodland, what would Artie have looked like? To find out, Lovejoy and Discovery Channel filmmakers will combine Maternus' drawings of Artie's skeleton with Life Modeler's simulations, and then apply some Hollywood technical magic. The process about to begin is called motion capture. It's used by feature filmmakers and video game producers to create digital characters that move like real humans. But we do only articular surfaces. 
Since there is no living analog for Artipithecus, Lovejoy will use the next best thing, Jade Kwan, a stunt woman who is about Artie's size. After the session, Jade's proportions will be adjusted to exactly match Artie's. Yeah, it's a whole new little set this and this. That's why I have to keep looking at that thing over there. Jade's suit is studded with reflective markers. Her motion is captured by an array of 120 cameras connected to a bank of computers designed to capture her every movement from every possible angle. Because you're going to be walking and not running. I noticed that you... You, you don't have to bend, bend the knees yeah, so I'm much. Trying to stay. Yeah, trying Lovejoy will coach stay. Jay through the session using his extensive knowledge of Artie's anatomy and habitat. And T pose, please. Roll cameras. And we're rolling. Now walk really fast. Jade's movements are translated into data in real time. Oh, that was a good take, huh? We can do that as a separate take or something. You know. The the foot that we're looking at in Artipithecus has no living um, analogy. There's nothing like it. But there are elements of our own hands and our own feet in terms of motion patterns that we can combine and in that way achieve something that looked like the Artipithecus foot motion. Now, work can begin on building the fully detailed computer animation. To complete the process, the animation team will have to add one final dimension, the living world that surrounded Artipithecus as she walked some 4.4 million years ago. The hard fossil evidence is now in hand. But it seems to pose more questions than answers. Artipithecus brains were small, the size of a chimpanzee's. Their big toes allowed their feet to grasp tree branches. But their short palms and flexible wrists show that these creatures never walked on their knuckles as chimps do today. The shape of the pelvis confirms that Artie was some kind of early biped. Since the time of Darwin, two fundamental questions in human evolution have challenged researchers. How and why our ancestors began to walk habitually on two legs. The Artipithecus discovery now represents the earliest hominid skeleton. But Artipithecus is a creature so new, so unexpected, that visualizing it is difficult, even for the scientist. So Discovery Channel filmmakers will use digital animation to try to bring Artie back to life. Motion capture sessions in Hollywood have provided data to help animate a digital arty. Now, the detailed anatomical drawings created by Jay Maternus are transformed into three-dimensional digital images. After months of work, motion capture data are finally applied to the static digital skeleton. Placing Artie's body into her lost world will be the final step. The artists are relying on evidence from the grueling fieldwork done at Aramis to fill in details of the natural environment. This mountain of data is used to digitally recreate the woodland environment of Artipithecus. The final step is to incorporate the digital arty.